Okay, right now let's go ahead and see how can we install the MariaDB database. First, we need to go to the symbol and tutorial in here, MariaDB.org, and press on the download button in here. Click on it, should take you to the download page. Go ahead, as you can see that MariaDB is free and open source software, and here are the premium sponsors for the MariaDB, really big sponsored, booking, Alibaba, Tencent, Microsoft, go ahead and click the load. That's really encouraging. Now the available versions right now is 10.2 and 10.3. 10 10.8 10 is telling me that's the stable version, but I'm going to go for the latest version, 10.3. Go ahead and click the green button. Now choose the operating system that we'll be using. Can I choose, as you can see from here, Windows or Linux? I'm going to use it on the Windows 64 bit. Go ahead and click on it. Or choose your version. As you can see now, it should be downloading. As you can see, it's being downloaded. I have it already downloaded. So I'm going to double click on the downloaded file. As you can see in here, press run. Here is the installation window. I'm going to press next. Accept the terms, and here is the components that will be installed with the bundle in here. And this one here, it's really interesting. This is the graphical user interface that we will be using, HiD SQL. So go ahead and press next. The root user, consider this is as the administrator user or the super user. So go ahead and specify a password for it. We will be using the root. To do a lot of things okay this option in here enable access from remote machines for root users if you'd like to access your database from remote machines for the root user it's okay just leave it right now we're not going to use it the service name i'm going to rename it to mariadb and the tcb port you maybe have a problem if you have the same port if you have the MySQL installed because you are using the same port, so if you have this problem, you need to change one of the ports, the MySQL port or the MariaDB port. Right now, I'm going to leave it as a default, and I'm going to press next. I'm not going to enable this right now. Go ahead and install. Yes, go ahead and install it. It should be straightforward and fast, as I hope. Okay, it's done very fast. If you go to the store, it as you can see now, here it is recently added. I have the Heidi SQL. I can go ahead and open it. As I told you, this is the graphical user interface that we will be using. Here it is. I can go ahead and add a new session. From here, I can go ahead and choose the network type. I can connect to any database my sql and by sql here i can choose to connect to mariadb or my sql or you can connect to sql server the microsoft of course sql server or the postgresql right now i'm going to choose my sql tcb over ip and when you see this ib in here this means a local host this local machine this is the local one again here is the root go ahead and give it the password this is the port and if there is a database that we would like to connect i'm going to leave this right now i'm going to click on this in here double click and we are connected but the connection is not rename we can go ahead and rename it it's not important right now but as you can see here is the heidi sql that we are going to use to almost do everything to the mariadb database and it's free and in the bundle of the MariaDB. I can use it for example to create a new database for example I'm going to call this maybe HR database the collagen we're going to discuss this later don't worry just leave it as default for now okay I'm going to choose okay and as you can see here the code is generated for us create database HR we didn't have to write any code anything that we will be doing in the interface in here will be translated into code we don't have to do this it's doing it for us as you can see we have a new database in here 
old age car i can come in here of course and create a new table maybe name this table employees and i can come in here and tell it that this table will contain the information about each employee for example this is just as a test i can start adding the columns maybe the employee number the data type would be an end we're going to go through all of this so don't worry we're just navigating through the interface i can come in here and tell it the employee name i can make this text to go down to variable character and i'm going to explain all of these data types don't worry go ahead and save this in here here it is go ahead and save it as you can see it's translated into a sql code without us doing anything create table all of what we are doing as you can see in here is translated into code which is really interesting now we have a table that we've created in here it's called employees i can go ahead and create another one i can drop it i can edit it and make it empty really very uh, powerful small and free interface that we can use so next we're going to see how to create or install readyb on the cloud see you in the next lecture welcome back in this lecture you will be creating your first MariaDB database let's go ahead and do it so here I have Heidi SQL I'm going to create a new session in here from new session in root folder I'm gonna name it for example local host you can go ahead and name it whatever you want here I have the IP address this IP address is the local for this machine or any other machine actually this is the local IP address you can replace it with the word local host or the actual IB if you have real IB you can just type it in here and the user root this is as we agreed before this is the administrator or the super user for the database I'm gonna type the password that I said earlier when we were installing MariaDB and I'm going to click on open yes okay here it is now it's open and connected without any problem to create a database simply Come in here, right click and choose create new database. As easy as this. So the name of the database, go ahead and type it for example, maybe this is employees database, going to store information about the employees. The collagen actually is a set of rules for storing and ordering the data in the columns in the database. Don't worry about it right now. We're not going to change it. So as you can see here is the code for creating database. Create database employees. It's saving the time for us and doing it using the GUI in here, which is very fast. What if I wanted to use, as you can see here is the database created. What if I wanted to use the code to create it? I can simply come in here and start typing in the query in here. I would like to create a new database. So I'm going to do it using the SQL code. So create database, just name it test or any name that you prefer. Go ahead and run this from this icon in here. And it's executed as you can see in here. Create database, it's affected without running. Let's just go and refresh. And here it is. You see, it's very easy to create it using the Heidi SQL interface or using the uh, SQL code in here and the same for the delete or the drop if I would like to delete or drop my database I can just come in here and choose drop warning you will lose all the objects in the database in please okay there's no objects actually if I would like to do it using the code I can simply type drop database test and run now I'm deleting the test not the please because it's already deleted go ahead and execute sql here it is just need to refresh and it's created really it's nice feature that we have in here to see whatever you're doing it's translated into sql code so you can revise whatever you're doing in here you see show databases show the databases drop database test show databases drop database and please everything every single step you're doing it's translated into sql code which is really really very powerful that's it for now 
and see you in the next lecture. Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to see how to create and manage users in MariaDB. It's really important to know how to create and manage users because in a real world scenario in a production, we'll be creating a lot of users, maybe users to only select data from your database, maybe another user to take backups, maybe another user to create objects, maybe a force user to add and update your data in your database. So it's really important to know how to create and manage users. And actually it's pretty easy to do with using the Heidi SQL. So first I'm going to connect to my database, here it is. So I'm going to create a new database, click in here, create new database. And I'm gonna name it maybe employees again. Okay. Right now to create users, I'm going to create another user other than the root user and I'm gonna give it specific permissions on this database. So from the tool in here, we can go to user manager. From user manager, we can start adding users from here and give them permissions. So here is the username I'm going to add maybe, name it HR, okay. And the password, go and choose anything that you like. From here, allow access to, as you can see here, global privileges. This here, all of this are SQL statements. Execute, select, show, alter, create, all of this statements. We're going to see most of them, or almost most of them, in the upcoming lecture, so don't worry. So from here, I can give this user, the HR user in here, maybe he can execute, maybe he can select, or show databases, or alter, or create or create a view or as you can see as I'm going I can give him but this permissions here is given globally as you can see to all the databases not specific database or not specific tables. So let's go ahead and see what does this mean now how it's different. So I'm going to give him only execute and select. So I'm going to save so he cannot create items okay he can create tables for example. So I save it and here it is, it's created in here, create user HR at localhost, identified by, this is the password that I entered. And if I come in here and try to add new, right now I'm connecting using the root, which is the administrator. So I can come in here, of course, and create a new table. I know that we didn't discuss table yet, but we're going to discuss. There is a whole section about tables because they're really important. But cope with me and create this table. So I'm going to name this table maybe please names this table should contain the names of them please just add one column don't change anything just save it and it should be created successfully here it is it's created without any problem and please name it's it's not going to be used this is just as a test to see if i have specific or enough or sufficient permission or privileges to create tables so right now i'm going to connect using another user so from the file session manager i'm going to create another one so create new one hr connection i'm gonna name it this name and i'm gonna use the hr users that i created and i create a password one two three it's very easy so go ahead and connect it and here it is yes just change it and i'd like to disconnect this in here so right now I'm only connecting using the HR. So let's go ahead. He, now he have access to the employees, the new database and the table. He can see it without any problem, but can he create another table? Let's go ahead and try it. So from new, we're going to do the same. Create table, I'm gonna give it a name, any name. Just, just add a column and save it. As you can see. SQL error, create command, deny it to this user because he doesn't have enough permissions to do this task. You see the difference? What if I wanted to delete the employees names, the table that I created? I can come in here and press drop. You think it will be dropped? No, it will not be dropped. Again, because he doesn't have sufficient permission to do this specific task. He can view, but he cannot create or delete. So let's go ahead and give him enough permissions to do both of them. So I'm going to connect using the local host root. 
So now I'm an administrator now, and I'm going to the user manager. I'm gonna go to the HR. I'm gonna give him maybe. If I give him from here group privileges in here so that he can create or delete, it will be given to all the databases. What if I wanted to give him specifically on this database employees? Imagine that I have maybe 10 or 20 databases and I would like only this user to access only the employee database. So I can close this in here and you see this in here add object. I can go ahead and add object. I'm going to add the employees and now the employee is here and I can start giving him specific permissions on this specific database. So right now I'm going to use create or maybe delete as well and drop. Delete, this is a delete statement for record drop is for dropping objects like the tables, views and the databases. So go ahead and save it. That's it going to disconnect going to refresh just to make sure that everything is working properly so right now i'm going to create a new table i'm gonna name it maybe test again let's see if it will work this time i'm adding a column and let's go ahead and press save and it's working here it is you see now using the same HR connection, it's working without any problem. If I try to delete or drop this table, again, it's dropped without any problem because now the HR user has sufficient permissions to do these tasks. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and see you in the next one. Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to discuss database tables. What is a database table? A relational database consists of many components as we're going to see, but the most important one is the table. It's the heart of the relational databases. The database table is where all the data in the database is stored. If there is no tables, there is no reason for a relational database to exist. So take a look at this example in here. This is a simple table we have in here. We have a blurry name. This is a column. Here is the title or the name or the attribute called layer name and here is the data itself each data is a row so here we have a column the column player name and row the first one is ronaldo then we have Messi, then salah then Neymar. then the second column is the country the third is the t-shirt number the fourth is born on and the date so this is a very simple example of a table so to design such structures in a database we're going to see how to do this in this lecture we're going to do this using the sql script and using the id sql okay this is here this tab the query is where i'm going to type all my sql script so make sure that you're using the human resources database and you are on the query tab and in here i'm going to specify the sql code or i'm going to write it to do things right create table add column to a table or drop a table or selecting some data from a table all our queries are going to be inside of this query tab in here okay so by default you might find it it's smaller than i have to increase the font you can go ahead to tools preferences sql and you can go ahead and increase it as you want as i'm increasing it it's increasing as you can see so right now i'm using 18 and i can go ahead and play with the colors the foreground and etc so go ahead and switch user so right now i'm going to create a new table using the sql script this table will consist of a person id a person name a city and a country very simple so to create anything in the sql or mariadb we're going to use the create command so create and then we need to specify what are you creating we're going to create a table then we're going to need to give it a name so the table is going to be named maybe persons okay that's not it we need to continue so we're going to open and close the parentheses like this then we're going to specify the columns inside of this table so i'm going first to add the person id that's the first column 
the person name and maybe the city and maybe the country you can go ahead and add anyone or any else or any other columns that you would like to add so we are not done yet actually because each column of these columns i need to specify the data type the type of the data that is going to be stored in each column so the person id probably it's going to be a number so to use a number there is plenty of options in the MariaDB but I'm going to use the very popular one which is the end or the integer and for the person name I can go ahead and use character there is other ways to store text inside of the columns in the MariaDB but I'm going to use for now my personal favorite which is the variable character and the text or the variable character in here we need to specify the length so I'm going to use 100 between two braces like this and I'm going to explain the differences between the character the variable character and the other data types as we're going so I'm going to choose a data type for the city or which data type is suitable for the city maybe it's also variable character is going to store some text and also the country is going to be variable character and don't forget to separate your columns with comma like this this is the comma okay right now we're ready to run this code or execute it so i'm going to click on this cute blue icon in here execute sql so i'm going to execute it and i'm going to refresh my database I press f5 simply when i refresh it i will have a new table called person if i right click and choose edit here I have my columns and here is the data type that is specified with the lenses. Okay. So what if I wanted to edit something in this column? This is probably a scenario. You create a table and you edit it, not the data itself. We're going to go to the data and see how can we add some data to this table. But what if I wanted to edit the structure? We can simply use, for example, I'm going to add a column I would like to add a new column how can I do this okay stay focused so what I'm going to do is I'm going to till it outer table persons so again like create we're going to use alter to edit anything what object are you going to alter it's a table and its name is persons okay so what are you going to alter in this table it's asking me I'm going to add a column. See, it's very straightforward. Year of purse. And it's going to be of the type date. This is a type used to store date. Okay. So again, with the command, I'm altering alter, table called persons. I'm adding a column called year of purse of type date. Very straightforward, I guess. You're going to get familiar with it. So Right now, if I executed this, it's going to execute the create table again, and that's not what I want. What I want is to execute only this. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to this icon in here, and I'm going to run selection. Okay, run selection, I'm going to run only this. And if I refresh my table right now and edit again, we don't have anything actually. Let's refresh our database let's try to edit it again okay now it's added year of birth and the data type is date as you can see okay let's go ahead and try to add something different what if i wanted to remove a column maybe i don't need the country i need only the city how can i do this simply again you can come in here and tell it alter table persons and we use the keyword drop for deleting a column so drop which is going to delete column and give it the name of the column what are you saying leave the city or the country i'm going for the country right for now okay let's go ahead and execute this again let's refresh our database open the column again for the table there is no column country it's deleted or dropped very interesting so let me 
try to do something else. What if I wanted to change the data type of one of these columns in here? Maybe change the year of birth to an end. I don't want to store the whole date, only the year. So how can I do this? Again, simply we're going to tell it older table persons and we're going to tell it modify we're going to modify a column and this column is going to be called for example the year of purse and I'm gonna change it to an end so what I did again alter table persons now he knows all the Maria he knows she knows actually if I can say this uh, it's Maria <laughs> So modify, I'm going to modify a column, year of birth, to type end. Let's run this. So go ahead and run selection. Let's refresh our database. And check your table. And here it is, the reverse has changed to an end. I hope that's an easy. If you think this is easy, that, that's really good. You're going to get familiar with the SQL script, with the SQL code. So, Right now, this is the hard way to do it. We can do it in a very easy way using this GUI in here. But first, let me delete this table. So to delete the table, I can simply come in here and drop table persons. Okay, so go ahead and run this. Run selection, and we're done. If I refresh this right now, there is no tables inside of my human resources database. See, very straightforward. So what I'm going to do now is going to create the same table, person ID, person name, city and country using the Heidi SQL. So I'm going to choose right click, create new table, and I'm going to give it a name, persons, can go ahead and add your comment if you'd like to leave a comment for this table and in the column section in here I'm going to start to add columns so the first one is going to be person ID it's going to be and here is actually a very nice list I can see that this is all the numeric numbers tiny and small and medium and and big and and big and real is storing the floating point numbers you can find the text really Call options to use the Heidi SQL. So I'm going to leave it as the end in here. I'm going to add a new column. This will be person name, and it's going to be a variable character. And I can go ahead and set it to 50 or 150 or anything actually. Go ahead and add the city. Also variable character. Just leave it 150 and the country. Again, also variable character. Can go ahead and change it if I want, of course. Maybe country will be only 100. And from there, we're going to press save. And here it is. We created our table. You see, the as you can see in here, everything that I am doing is being transformed into a SQL script. So here is what I did create table, person ID, null, person ID. We're going to check it's adding some extra SQL script, but we're going to get through this. So don't worry about this. If I open my database right now, I have this new table created using the IDSQL in a very fast way. So I hope that this was fun and see you in the next lecture. Okay, let's learn more about data types by creating more columns to the persons table that we've created in the last lecture. So I'm going to choose the persons and I'm going to choose edit. And in here, this is the column that we've created, the person ID, the person name, the city, the country. If you don't have them, please go ahead and create them. It's going to be the first one of type end, the person ID, and the person name, city, and country is going to be of type variable characters. So let's go ahead and try to add more columns. I'm going to press add, and I'm going to add, for example, Maybe the address. I would like to store the address, and the address is going to be actually the Heidi SQL is doing a great job. When you hover over any data type, it's going to give you a brief about each data type, as you can see in here. Go ahead, play with it, read the documentation about these data types. But 
What is the difference between the variable character and the character? There is a magnificent difference between them. The character field is a fixed lens, and the variable character from its name, it's a variable lens field. What does this mean? This means that the storage requirements are different. The character data type always takes the same amount of a space regardless of what actually you're going to store. Again, what does this mean? So if I made the address character and they specified it to be 50 and they give only 10 letters to the address of this 50, it's going to store the 50, not the 10, because it's fixed lens, which is not good for the memory and the performance if you're going to store this empty spaces or this spaces. On the other hand, if you're choosing variable character, variable character is dynamic. It's going to store what actually you used, not the whole lens. So it's very good option to use the variable character rather than the character itself. So I'm going to add more columns, leave the character and the characters. And I'm going to choose maybe the date of birth, DOB, the date of birth. And I'm going to choose a date. There is a type called dates going to store the date. And it's telling you the format that it should be stored in. I'm going to choose it. And I'm going to add another column. This column is going to be maybe the salary. I'm going to choose the salary. And the salary is going to be of type decimal. Decimal actually takes two inputs in here the length and the numbers after the point so i'm going to choose for example 10 and two digits is enough i guess and i'm going to add one more column no that's that's enough for now i'm going to save this so to save this we can go ahead and click save and i'm going to choose persons again and go to choose we have only person so no need to choose it already go to the data tab and we can go ahead and start adding some records to this table in here that's not the best way to add records to a table we're going to discuss update and insert statements in the upcoming lectures but right now we're going to use the Heidi SQL to add rows to this table so I'm going to choose this green icon in here insert row into table as you can see it's changed in here so I can now add items the person ID is going to be one the person name maybe we can add Jessica the city maybe it's New York the country USA and the address go ahead and type anything or leave it empty it's not a problem the date of birth later we're going to see how not to let the database leave fields or columns or rows to be empty like this we can apply some constraints to make us must supply or give some input to this column in here. Okay, we're going to see this later. The date here actually the Heidi SQL is doing us a great job. It generated the date automatically for us, and you can come in here and change it, increase it or decrease it, or even type it from the beginning. But as you can see, it takes it in this maybe it's strange for you at the first, but it takes the year, dash, month, dash, and the date. Okay, year, months, day, and separated by dashes. So I'm going to choose maybe 1990 November. That's okay. And the salary, I'm going to choose any number in here. If you remember, we added only two numbers after the point. So I can come in here and add more, but it's going to round it to two numbers only. Right now, nothing of this has been saved, as you can see from this red corner in here. Go ahead and click post. And it's going to post the number in here without a problem. And now it's saved. It inserted already this record into the database. I can come in here and add more if I want. As you can see in here, the number, the date of birth, the address, the country, city, and I can come, let's go ahead and try to add another one, maybe number two. And maybe James, the city is maybe Berlin, maybe the country, not maybe Berlin is in Germany. 
and any address and you can go ahead and choose any date as I told you you can come in here and create the year and I'm going to leave the salary I'm going to choose it anywhere you can go ahead in here and sort it if you want it's really ascending or descending I'm going to discuss this in detail so don't worry about this I can come in here and choose it so as you can see now I added two records I can sort it by the name ascending or descending or the city or the country or the address actually there's no address right now and the date of birth of course I can select it and the salary there is no salary in here so what is really happening in here with the salary is that it rounded to the two numbers if you remember that we added a very long number after the point but it only used two number and this is the comma for the thousand it's not the point here at the point so that's a very easy way to create tables using the Heidi SQL and that would be it and see you in the next welcome back in this lecture we're going to discuss primary case but first let's define what is a primary key simply a primary key is a special relational database table column or multiple columns so it can be a single column or multiple columns that will uniquely identify all the table records the main features of the primary key is that it's unique it cannot be duplicated and it cannot contain null it cannot be empty the primary key concept is critical to an efficient relational databases if there is no primary keys relational databases is not going to work so almost all of us deal with primary keys in our daily life without us knowing this so all the citizens for example no matter what nationality you have you must have some kind of a unique number you must have a passport number all of these numbers are a primary keys or they are unique and cannot contain null you cannot have an id of null and your id cannot be duplicated with someone else car licenses also are the same bank accounts employee ids in a company so there is a lot of examples for primary keys so how can we create primary keys in MariaDB? let's go ahead and find out okay I'm going to create a new table called persons the same table that we were creating in the previous lectures so if you have it ready from previous lectures go ahead and drop it or delete it I'm going to create table and call it persons again and the persons table is going to have two columns the first column is going to be person ID and we have seen this before type end and to mark this column that this is the primary key because this column is going to hold the primary key or the identification number of each person simply all we have to do is to type primary key and that's it now MariaDB knows that this table person's ID has a column called person ID which is going to be the primary key for this table so let's go ahead and add another one maybe person name of variable character and maybe 150 and that's it i'm gonna leave it like this go ahead and execute it if we refresh our database in here person let's go ahead and edit it we can see that now there is a new icon in here we saw the person id it's marked as a key in here okay Let's go ahead and check the data. Let's see what does this will behave or make the behavior of our table. So I'm going to specify the number in here. Maybe person ID is going to be one. I'm going to choose maybe my name, but and then I'm going to click on this icon post. And now it's posted. I'm going to add a new one. Maybe number two. I'm gonna choose maybe Anya. I'm going to click post. I'm going to add another one. And this time I'm going to give it the same number for this person, maybe Ahmed, this record in here. So I'm going to add one 
I'm going to give it a different name, maybe Jack. I'm going to click anywhere in here. As you can see in here, it's telling me that there is a duplicate value for number one because this is a primary. It's notifying me that this is a primary key in case that I forget or if that I didn't notice it. So let's go ahead and make this three, but I can duplicate the name without a problem. So I can make this. But again, without a problem, it will accept it because the person name is not a primary key. And as we agreed that the primary key must be unique and cannot be null. So if I try to make it null in here and give it any name, maybe Emma, go ahead and place it anywhere. As you can see in here, person ID doesn't have a default value. I can make this four. And I can leave the name empty, okay? Because the name is not a person name is not a a primary key, and there is no a constraint to tell it that you must enter this name. Later, we're going to see how to make it or make a constraint to make it enter the person name and it's not going to accept any data if you didn't enter the person name without making it a key. Okay, so this is one of the ways to create primary key. So I'm going to drop the table and create the primary key in a different way. So drop table persons, go ahead and drop it. Now it's dropped. If we refresh our database, it's going to be dropped. Okay, let's go ahead and create it again. So I'm going to create it in a different way and I'm going to add something in here. So I'm going to create table persons and I'm going for the person id let's type end and person name which is variable character as we've created it before 150 so i still didn't add my primary key we have seen that we can add it in here very simply and we can add it in a different way we can come in here and tell it that i'm going to add a constraint primary key is some type of constraint and we're going to discuss constraints next so constraint i'm gonna give it a name maybe primary key on the person id this is just a name and i'm going to specify that this constraint is of type primary key and i need to specify the column so the column is going to be person id so this is another way to create a primary key and in here i'm going to do a trick in here i'm going to make this field to increment i would like this number to be incremented without me entering it so i'm going to add this keyword Uto increment as you can see in here turn it blue it's a keyword so this will make this field auto increment by one each time so i can come in here now and run this as you can see in here because that i missed in here a comma so if i add this comma in here and i'm going to run this now it accepts it without a problem so make sure that all the comments are placed without a problem. Go ahead and refresh it. So here it is, my new created column. I'm going to go to the edit mode or the data. In here, I'm going to add in some data. I'm not going to specify the person ID. I'm going to choose the person name, maybe James. I'm going to add another one. Did you see that, that the person ID was generated automatically without me adding this? Let's watch again. Maybe Jack. I have something with the J's in here. Go ahead and add it. As you can see, the two also is added. Maybe use Jennifer. And here it is, as you can see. If I deleted one record, if I press right click, delete selected row. And if I add it again, what do you think the person ID is going to be? Three. Or something else it's going to be not three it's going to be four so let's go ahead and add maybe my name and here it is because in the background it already saved that there is there was a three a number of three so it's keep incrementing with time later we can see how can we reset it or get the last value okay so this is how can you create primary keys using the SQL script the easy way, of course, to create it using the 
hide the SQL. So if I come in here and tell it to create new table, so I can come in here now and add a new column. I'm going to give it a name. Maybe this is going to be uh, an employee table, going to contain the employee ID, I'm going to be of type end. Then add another one, another column. Maybe it's going to be the employee or well, the first name, direct first name. It's going to be the variable character. I'm going to add another one. Maybe the last name. I'm going to keep it simple. So to make this a primary key, simply just right click in here, create new index, primary. Now it's flagged or marked as a primary key, as you can see in here. And you can come in here and give table a name so this table is going to be called and please save it and if I refresh my human resources database now I'm gonna see that there is the employees table created if I go to dated mode we are already in dated mode in here and the employee ID is marked as the primary key so that's it about the primary keys and see you in the next lecture welcome back in this lecture we're going to discuss constraints Constraints are used in MariaDB to limit the behavior of the data entered into your table. I can make, for example, some fields are mandatory that I have to enter them. I can make some fields auto increment. I can make some columns unique without making them primary keys, or I can make them have a default value. Let's go ahead and see how can we do this. So in here, I'm going to drop the table persons I'm going to create it again but first let's drop the current one so drop table persons if you have it go ahead and drop it if you don't have then ignore this command in here okay so what I'm going to do is to create it again create table persons and I'm going to create the first column person ID is going to be of type end. Primary key is going to be auto increment. So now this field is the primary key, which means that this is going to be a unique and cannot contain null values and is going to be auto incremented by one each time. I create another column person name. It's going to be of type variable character and the person name is a mandatory field so the user has to enter it so I'm going to make this using this keyword not null now MariaDB will check if this row or this column is not entered it will not allow you to save or insert in the database I'm going to see this the address for example the address is going to be variable character but it's not going to have any special constraint about it. I'm going to leave it as it is. So the user can enter it or can't. It's up to him. So I'm going to use the field, maybe the passport number. The passport number is going to be a variable character because it contains letters and is going to be unique because your passport number, it's only for you. No one else can have your passport number. So to make this field unique without making it primary key, simply we use the keyword unique. Now it will make sure that only one passport number is stored in your whole table and no one else can use it again. I'm going to test this. Now let's go ahead and create maybe the salary. Okay here and it's going to be decimal maybe 10 and 2 and I'm gonna make the salary have a default value maybe if the user didn't enter the value I'm gonna have a default I'm gonna set the number to maybe 4000 okay so now I've created the person's table with a little bit different constraints in here, we added the not null to the person name, the unique to the password number, and a default value of 4000 to the salary. Let's go ahead and execute this and refresh and open our 
person's table. In here, if you take a look now, the auto or the allow null in here is checked. This is allowed null, this also, and this. But it's not the person name because I told it in the query when we were creating the table that this cannot contain null. So I can go ahead and edit them in here without a problem. So let's go ahead and try it. So I'm going to add a record in here, maybe person ID. Well, I'm gonna leave it actually, it's going to increment. So I'm going to have a person name. Maybe the person name is going to be Charles. And the address, I'm going to leave it like this. And the passport number, maybe A134. This is just, of course, a dummy data and as you can see I didn't enter the salary and it's already there I can go ahead and change it or I can leave it okay password I you need to specify for the first time so I am going not to choose what I'm going to choose for example 12 so it's going to increment one each time after the 12 in here okay let's go ahead let's add another one and I'm going to add the person ID person name is going to be Emma and let me first not to enter the person name and i'm going to choose a number maybe so eight nine and i'm going to change the salary maybe five thousand and let's try this as you can see in here the field person name doesn't have a default value okay this means that there is no default value and i didn't give it a value so it's empty and this field cannot be empty i'm going to add a name in here as you can see now the person id incremented by one which is now 13 let's go ahead and add another one i'm going to add this maybe 15 i'm going to skip one i'm going to add maybe my name uh, make the address one two three street and i'm going to add the same password number as charlie so i'm going to go for a one two three four and let's see what the database is going to tell us. As you can see, duplicate entry A1234, the data that I entered, is already existed. So it cannot be added again, as you can see. So let's go ahead and change it, maybe make it one. And it's saved, as you can see. And if I add a number, it's give adding or incrementing after the last number that add which is 15 so now it's going to be 16 so this is going to be jack i'm going to leave everything else okay now it's 16 and as you can see in here the address and the passport number accepted the null because i didn't tell it that they must be entered and the salary is a default value we'll come back everyone in this lecture we're going to discuss foreign keys but first let's define what is a foreign key Foreign key is one or more columns in a table that refers to the primary key in another table. Foreign key is used to link two tables together. So its main purpose is to do linking or design a relation between tables as we're going to see. So let's go ahead and see how can we create foreign keys and design relations in MariaDB. We're going to see it using the SQL script first and using the Heidi SQL. So let's go ahead now and create two tables. I'm going to create two tables, one for the countries. I'm going to store the countries in it and one for the cities. And there is a relation between the countries and the cities. Each city should belong to one country. So we're going to make a relation between the cities and the country. So let's first create the countries table. So I'm going to create table countries. I'm going to create maybe the primary key is going to be the country ID. It's going to be an ID for the country. It will act as the primary key. Primary key. And you can go ahead and make it auto increment and you want. And don't forget the type of it. It's going to be enter. And maybe the country name. It's going to be variable character. And maybe it's 150. And it's not null must be provided and maybe the country abbreviation like for example countries use a uk de etc it's going to be variable character maybe maybe 
maybe five is enough i guess and it can be no nothing special about this and we can go ahead and even add the capital of each country it's going to be variable character maybe 100 okay now we're done with the countries table if we run this we should have a new table called countries let's refresh our database and here it is here is the table countries and the country id is a primary key it's good let's go ahead and continue so right now we didn't create any foreign keys in this table the cities that we're going to create we're going to create the foreign key and make a relation between the countries and the cities so create table cities city id probably when you're creating something you will have an id for each row to identify this row it will act as the primary key so i'm going to use the so the ID is going to be an end, it's going to be the primary key. Some special cases, we will need to have two columns as the primary key, as we're going to see. City name, also variable character, maybe 150 again, and not no. Right now, I didn't make the relationship between the countries and the city, so I'm going to do it. How do I do this? First, we tell it that we're going to create a foreign key like this, and it's going to be on the country ID. But wait a minute, I don't have a country ID in this table, so you need to create a country ID in this table in here and just leave it as it is. Don't mark it with anything, okay? So, right now I have three columns the city ID, which belongs to this city, and the city name belongs to the city containing the name of the city and the country ID it's going to hold for example 1 2 or 3 or 10 or 1000 100 or any other number and this number will link to this table to get the data related to this number as we're going to see so here I specified that I'm going to create a foreign key on this column in this table but I need to tell it where it's going to link so I'm going to use this new keyword references and I'm going to tell it that it's going to take you to the countries table. This is the table in here. And I'm going to add the column in this table. So again, what did I do? I added the country ID in here, which is going to hold the numbers. It's going to link me to this table, to this specific row in here. And we're going to see this in detail, how to link it and how to extract this data from here and then we added the foreign key it's going to be the country id it's mean this column in here it's going to reference to this table the countries to this column in this table okay i hope it's clear let's go ahead and try to execute this run selection and we should have It is here. It is. Let's go ahead to edit mode. As you can see, I have a special field in here. As you can see, there is some kind. If you can see this, there is a link between two tables in here. If I go to this tab, foreign keys tab in here, I can see that there is a foreign key created, and it's going to be linked the column ID in my table. It's going to the table, the reference table, countries. To the foreign column which is the country id this is exactly the information that we gave in here in the query foreign key country id reference to the countries to the country id this is the same only that we are using here the joey or the id sql okay right now i'm going to create a new table using the id sql and i'm going to connect it to the employees table in here this table is going to be called departments. It's going to contain the departments in my human resources database. So let's go ahead and create this new table. So right click, create new table. I'm gonna name it departments. I'm going to add a new column, department ID. It's going to be enter, of course. Go ahead and mark this as primary key. Create new index, primary, add department name variable character and just go ahead and save this from here 
Okay, it's created. If we refresh our database, we can see that we have a new created table department. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the department ID to the employees ID in here using the same column, but I don't have a department ID on this column, if you remember. So I'm going to add the department ID in the employees column in here. Go ahead and click add. It added it at number three. You can go ahead and leave it or move it down. I'd like to move it down or move it anywhere you like just to recognize things. Department ID and the data type is going to be end. Here it is. Okay, let's go to the foreign keys tab and add new foreign key. I'm going to name it maybe department department ID and please and just go ahead and choose any name that you like columns is going to be the department ID it's going to be reference it to the table this is the table that I'm going to link to which is the departments I'm going to link to department ID column in the departments table so go ahead and click this Let's go ahead and click save and it's saved successfully and as you can see in here there is some link icon created in the department ID. If you have a problem creating this foreign key or primary keys probably you will have some data in here so go ahead and clear your data if you're going to do some linking and you're facing some problems. Okay so that's it about foreign keys and how to design relations we're going to see this frequently. So. I hope it's easy and see you in the next welcome back in this lecture we're going to see something really interesting we're going to see how to import data into our database to import data in ReadDB, we need to have csv files csv files can be created using excel sheet you can go ahead and create csv file using excel so you can just open an excel add some data or you have some data and just save as csv so right now I'm going to upload a couple of tables in here. I'm going to upload the countries, departments, and jobs. I'm avoiding the cities and the employees because if you notice that cities have a relation with the country, so there has to be some data for the countries. I cannot go ahead and upload the cities first because it's going to look for the country ID and it will not find it. The same for the employees. It's going to look for the country ID and the department. And if there is no data in these two tables, I might have a problem. So I'm going to upload the first tables, countries, jobs, and departments. So let's start and adding some data. But first, I needed to go ahead and clear any data that you might have. You can go ahead and right click on the tables, empty table, or simply go to any data that you have, like this, for example, just Select what you want to delete, right click and delete selected. We're going to see how to delete data using SQL script later. So right now I'm going to choose tools, import CSV file. And from here I'm going to export the first one is going to be the countries. And in here there is a couple of information that I would like to revise with you. Ignore the first, probably in most of CSV files or the Excel files, the first line or the first row is going to be the header. So if that's not the case, make it zero. If you have the header in number one or the first line, go ahead and make it one so that it can ignore the first column. Okay. Here you have option. You can insert. You can insert ignore, which is going to do duplicates, or you can replace, which is going to replace if there is a key, if there is for example, country number one in your table already, and you're uploading an Excel file or a CSV file that have number one, it's going to replace it. So I'm going to choose replace for now. And in here, I'm choosing comma. So please make sure that you have a comma fields terminated by comma. Okay. And in here, the destination, I'm going to choose, of course, the human resources database. Go ahead and choose the name of the database that you have named it. I hope that you name it like me, human resources, so that's easier. And in here, I'm going to choose the table that I'm going to upload to. In this case, I'm going to choose countries. Okay, here are the field that I'm going to copy or upload. Go ahead and import. And it didn't say anything, but it uploaded it. If I go to the countries right now, as you can see, now I have a couple of countries. 
can go ahead and add more if you'd like but this is what I have right now let's go ahead and try another one tools report CSV let's change the file I'm going to choose maybe jobs go ahead and human resources selected choose jobs import let's go ahead and check to jobs and here we have the jobs we have the minimum salary the maximum salary and the minimum experience years really interesting let's do the last one import csv let's choose the departments and change the table to departments human resources already selected and let's check the departments and here is our departments so that's how you can upload data into the database using the Heidi SQL. Very easy, I think, and very powerful. See you in the next lecture. So as your database is growing, you might have a problem determining which relation is going between two tables. So we can use a concept called Entity Relationship Diagram, or the ERD, to determine these relationships between different tables as our database is growing. What is Entity Relationship Diagram? It's a visual form of relational databases. It shows entities or the tables in a database and the relationships between the tables within this database. It's essential to have ERD as it shows three basic elements, the tables, the attributes or the columns, and the different relationships between them. We cannot do this using the Heidi SQL. This feature is not available right now. As I told you, there is different graphical user interface that we can use for MariaDB. First one that they recommend in the website is the database Workbench, and here is the link in the official MariaDB website, and here is the link for the database Workbench, and there is the DB Forge Studio for MariaDB, and the Navicat and the DB Schema. There is other alternatives that we can use, but all of these alternatives are not free. They are paid GUI that we can use. The one that we're going to try right now is the DB schema. So I'm going to install it right now and try to show you some of the basics to use the DB schema to manage a MariaDB database. Okay, here is the URL that we're going to use www.dbschema.com slash index.html you can go ahead and press download in here and in the download in here go ahead and click on the green button if you'd like and it will download the db schema for the version of windows you're using i'm using a 64-bit right now so i'm going to install this i have it already installed but i'm going to install it again with you okay Okay, yes, I would like to update. Probably will not have this one. But you the SQL query for it. We're not, we're not going to use this GUI or the DB schema to open all the SQL file. Just only this the DB schema project file. So press next. It's going to uninstall. It's pretty straightforward. The, there is no a lot of steps in here. Just a simple installation. After the installation is done, we're going to see how can we connect this DB schema to our Maria DB2 can get all the information. Remember that we have the human resources with some tables, the cities, countries, employees, and etc. Okay, let's create it. Run the DB schema. Here it is. Okay, as you can see in here that this is a trial. It will expire in 15 days. If you'd like to buy it, you can go ahead and buy it. As you can see here, I have a diagram for a database that I have already in my system. As you can see, here is the main table, the film, the, there is the film ID, the title of the film, the description, the release here, and there is the different relation. It's really a beautiful diagram in here. See the relations, where is going to what, the type of relation, and the column. It's really beautiful. So, how can I do this? diagram to our human resources database okay let's go ahead and see how can we create this beautiful diagram for our human resources database it's not going to be a lot of tables as our tables are not that much there are fewer than this so i'm going to choose project 
new project. I'm going to name it Human Resources. And from here, the RDBMS, you can go ahead and choose any database. There is a lot of databases in here, as you can see. Fox Pro, Fiber, Derby, DB2, there is SQL, the MySQL, the Cassandra, a lot of databases that we can use. We're going to choose MariaDB. Where are you, Maria? As, as you can see, the interface is changing based on the type of the database. We're going to go for MariaDB. And in here, you can find all the default settings, the local host. I have here the IB. If you have a different IB for your database or it is on the cloud or on another server, you can go ahead and add the host name or the IB address. And this is the port. I have the default port in here, 3306. And here is the root and the password. You can go ahead and type it. And as you can see, now I have access to the databases. I have the information schema and the human resources. Or you can even come in here and create new. Just press connect. And here it shows me that there is the human resources and there is the tables. Okay, that's what I'm going to work with. Press OK. And here it is. I have my diagram. This is just a quick tour in here. You can go ahead and use it to see what's doing what if you'd like, but we're going to see this. So here is my high tables that we've created. If you remember, we have the employees and here is the columns for the employees, the countries, and here is the relation between the countries, as you can see, and the employees, and the relation between the countries and the cities, and the cities and the experience, previous experience, and the departments, and the employees. Really amazing. Choose me. What is going where without me taking a look at the foreign keys or anything? This is just a beautiful diagram. This is the ERD diagram or the entity relationship diagram as you can see in here we missed one link we actually didn't miss it but we can see that maybe you missed some relation that you need to add or a table that is not connecting to any table this help you really view the relationship between your tables it's not only just about views we can go ahead and for example, I can come in here and right click and there is a plenty of options in here that we can do. For example, I can change the color of this is a special table. For example, the jobs, I can go ahead and make it red. This means that there is some kind of a problem with this table in here. Or I can come in here and set a call out. I can say that there is no relation for this table at the moment. And, and press OK. Now I can see that there is this comment in here showing me or my colleague that there is no relation for this table at the moment. I can go ahead in here and mark this at the main table, for example. Go ahead and make call out main table. Or I can change the color also. Maybe green. This guy, yeah, you can change the, the green in here. So it's really nice interface, the schema DB, you can go ahead and play with it. Next, we're going to see how to create tables using the DB schema. See you in the next lecture.